Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar session that uh, the AmCharm Energy Committee uh, organized jointly with uh, SAP, SAP Bulgaria, uh, SAP World and the Universe. We are, we are very happy to have you all here because today we join a community or former community of uh, uh, internal professionals within the American Chamber of Commerce, as well as uh, professionals that work in the utility sector in Bulgaria and probably abroad. And uh, today's topic, uh, Intelligent Utilities, will focus on the practical advice and practical cases that will suit your business and will serve your business needs. Uh, without further ado, I'll continue to the uh, housekeeping rules. Everyone will be muted. The meeting is recorded because the uh, knowledge has to be shared afterwards. And uh, we've got two distinguished speakers, Miguel, uh, Mikel Carbo and uh, Fritz uh, Schwarzenländer, uh, as well as two senior executives, uh, Olivier Marquette, who is president of Amcham Bulgaria, and co-chair of uh, the Energy and Mineral Resources Committee of the American Chamber, and Radomir Milanov, who is general manager of SAP Bulgaria. So, dear all, uh, without further ado, I'll pass the relay to Olivier for a short introduction. Enjoy the session, and uh, if there is uh, any and there are any questions, use the chat box at the uh, right hand side of the screen or uh, type it uh, there and uh, your question will be addressed shortly. Thanks, thanks Nikki. Um, and so, yeah, I'd like to, to welcome um, everyone uh, to this uh, special event uh, as part of the uh, Energy and Mineral Resources Committee of, of AMCHAM. Um, we've, uh, we've typically tried to, to bring to this committee either like some policy discussions or uh, so more like forward looking, uh, uh, presentation. And I think this one falls in, in this latter category. Um, it, it's obvious that the energy sector is, uh, is, is undergoing a, a massive uh, transformation. I would call it a revolution. Um, and, uh, you know, the, so it's, it's both a, a technological, uh, revolution in terms of, uh, the, the, the different technology that can be used to produce uh, electricity. Uh, we've seen indeed the renewable uh, energy, the cost decreasing drastically, energy storage coming in. But I think another transformation, uh, which is uh, uh, also fundamental, is uh, how digital world is, uh, is transforming the way that we run our business uh, and also we can create value in our business. And so I think in this context, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about this, uh, this presentation, uh, around intelligent utilities, which effectively will bring together, uh, you know, the, 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 the value and the, uh, the innovation, uh, from, from digital into the world of utilities. And so typically it's quite funny that the, the world of utility has pretty much been unchanged for the last hundred years. I mean, we, we still produce today electricity the same way we were doing hundred years ago. And, and, but, but, we are in the middle of a massive transformation. And so digital is the thing that, that will help us get better. Uh, uh, you know, we, we are using, uh, uh, well, digital tools in order to optimize, uh, the efficiency of our plants in order to change the way we, 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 we drive them. Um, and so I'm very much thanking, uh, you know, the SAP team to, to be with us today and to introduce uh, the, you know, they are there and to share, uh, their, their know-how. And I'm sure this will, uh, be very interesting to all of us and, and create, uh, will provide food for thought. Um, I, I would like also to, to, to thank, you know, we have very good participation, uh, uh, on, on, on this committee. I see a couple of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh senior executive at the energy company. Uh, hey, uh, you know, I see Crassy, Carol, and I'm sure I'm, I'm missing. Uh, many of them, but, but I'm, I'm pleased that, that we have a very good attendance as well. Um, so without, uh, uh, you know, further ado, uh, I'd like to hand over the world to uh, Radomir. Uh, he's the managing director of uh, SAP Bulgaria for uh, a few, a few words. So thank you all and enjoy this uh, webinar. Thank you very much, Olivier. Hope you hear me well. Uh, greetings from our office. 
First of all, uh, I would like to thank the team of AmCham, Peter, Danny, and Olivier, and the nice ladies, Biliana and Nadeja, for the organization. Uh, you are really great. Uh, this event was about to be in person, actually, uh, but due to the recent uh, situation, it's a webinar, uh, which doesn't mean that we are not going to bring substantial content. I would like to thank everybody who joined here. SAP uh, is investing a lot of money in the uh, energy and utility sector in a way that uh, we are working with, uh, with our clients and partners to bring some special value in three major directions. We have mentioned uh, efficiency of the production and transportation of uh, energy, let's say, is a topic which is uh, laying on the ground in Bulgaria, especially, uh, especially in the water services sector. The efficiency is very low where we're concentrated and I'm happy to see people from Sofia Water here. And I'm happy to see also Caro is here from Chess. Uh, Chess Bulgaria is uh, the largest SAP client and partner in Bulgaria. So we are proud of you, Caro, to, to be here with us. Uh, besides the efficiency, uh, it's about how we produce. Uh, there's the second topic where we will put intelligence into, and we're going to show you how, in an intelligent way, you can digitalize and optimize the production. Uh, and then is the transportation where everybody thinks it's a master, even we, but we are not. And the major thing is about the liberalization of the market, which is a major topic for all of us, uh, how we are serving the clients, which is a big challenge for the major companies, how they offer value-added services, how they improve the metering process, how they uh, make their customers more happy, and how they're decreasing the churn. Because as we see in the telecommunication sector, the churn ratio is increasing. So from October 2020, after the liberalization of the end user capacity market for, for retail, I think that uh, this will be a major challenge for many of the utility companies, especially in the electricity sector here in Bulgaria. In, in general, in SAP, in the energy and utilities, uh, we include the, the water supply companies, the water production companies. Um, also, we include the mining, but the main focus here will be uh, mainly on the electricity and water of this session. Uh, together with Miguel and Fritz. So enjoy the session. I'll be here all the time. Olivier is having 90 minutes with us. So for the Q&A session, I think it will be very valuable for all of us. And please make sure you use the chat here on the, on the WebEx platform in order to make uh, the, the, the contact a little bit easier. From SAP point of view, we are here with us. We are here to share knowledge. So ask any questions. Danny, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Rado. Can you hear me now well? Yes. All right. Uh, I have glitches here, and uh, we have to switch to SAP probably. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we're moving to the uh, most exciting part of the presentation, and these are the keynote speakers. Uh, Mikel is being connected from, from where, Mikel, actually? Uh, from Barcelona. All right. <laughs> so okay. you support Espanol, probably? Yes, indeed. I'm not Barcelona supporter, so I'm very happy of what is going on. <laughs> it's a wild guess of mine, and probably thanks to SAP technology, I'm starting to be a psychic a bit. All right, Mikel, the floor is yours. You have an excellent presentation full of... Um, case studies and experience. And uh, now I uh, pass the relay to you. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. Uh, thanks very much for your kind words. Um, and, and of course, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'm champ for this uh, nice invitation to uh, speak. Um, 
I will elaborate on the concept of uh, intelligent enterprise for utilities. Um, the main thing is uh, what is beyond the marketing? Because it uh, uh, looks like a marketing concept. Um, hopefully not. And that will be my best uh, uh, wish uh, for for this presentation and later on the, the follow-up discussions. On this propose, I will elaborate on the following. Uh, first of all, um, understanding. What is our understanding on the intelligent enterprise? Uh, secondly, uh, once from this understanding, uh, what do we deliver to uh, um, bring this in intelligent enterprise uh, with our support? And uh, third, um, how do we enable those uh, deliverables or those assets or these uh, IT solutions uh, can be uh, adopted by, by companies like yours? Uh, and finally, we will dedicate some time for Q&A. Um, regarding the understanding, uh, the, the first question always comes is, how does a company that is a, a software company knows about my business? And not only about uh, your business, but also the age of those business, which is the future. Uh, how can you claim you have this expertise? And um, I think that the best way to, to to convey this converse, this presentation and also uh, to express this uh, knowledge is by sharing uh, uh, use cases. Uh, companies, peers like you, that they already presented uh, their findings, what they are doing with, with our help or our portfolio. Uh, in, and, and this is uh, uh, shown in events. Uh, we have every six months a meeting of our uh, ecosystem. We call it ecosystem because it is not just um, uh, uh, companies like yours uh, joining, but also partner companies from other software vendors, technology vendors, and uh, services companies. All together, we meet every six months um, uh, to, sh to share that information and discuss and network, which is very, very relevant since many years. Uh, this is a snapshot of, of some of, of those uh, credentials, how many people attend. And, and the reason why we do it every six months is because the uh, first half of the year, we do it in Europe. Um, for example, this year was scheduled to take place in, in, in Switzerland. Uh, for, it, it became, we switched also into virtual. You know the reason why. Um, and the second half of the year, we do it in America. While this currently this week has occurred in virtual mode as well, this event. Um, so, are there use cases that show uh, what is this transition to the intelligent enterprise um, and um, or, or, or the needs in the market, why this is necessary? And uh, I selected one use case from Australia. This is a company called uh, South Australia Power Networks, a distributor, and they said that they need to adapt to a transforming energy market. I think this sounds familiar to you. Um, and, and what's the, 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 the reason? Well, the starting point, uh, you can un understand this picture, um, is, is that the, the, the way the network and the business model of energy is designed is based on power generation plants and then um, a high voltage transmission and then distribution in a linear way. And then uh, uh, we have consumers uh, on, on below that. Maybe the large consumers, they plug in uh, to the transmission uh, or substations. But uh, basically, this is the concept. Now, this is changing into uh, because of the eruption of um, new energy sources like solar panels, and you see the, the increase, dramatic increase of solar panel production, but also other renewables elements like uh, storage, batteries, electric vehicles. So it's creating a new ecosystem of energy production, but also uh, um, the technologies to manage uh, that that production. Therefore, the network is migrating into a model like this one, that uh, the distribution network becomes interoperable. It's not only delivering, but needs also to absorb. Um, and then they need automatisms to provide balancing. It's not anymore uh, manual switches. Uh, it's not so stable. Uh, that's the foundation concept of a smart grid, for example. Um, and that's a, a clear impact in the business model of, of energy companies because they need to invest in these new technologies. But also you, you may understand that below that there is a new business model because uh, uh, produce, uh, uh, the, the, the 
individuals can be not only consumers, but also producers, what we call the, a prosumer. So then you need to uh, re-establish the, the, the relationship with those uh, uh, customers, for example. Mm -hmm. So it goes a little bit beyond the, the, the concept of market liberalization. And then we enter into the what we call the energy transition. And the energy transition uh, requires new capabilities. But uh, there is a white space. And, and what's the reason of this white space? Because they find out that there are even communities that they are already unplugged. They, they just sometimes they plug in the network just for backup because they are autonomous. They can produce and manage their own energy. They can be even smart grids themselves. It's called microgrids. So the impact for, a, for an energy company of this fact is very disruptive because uh, where do you get the money from? with this model. So then you need to increase your capabilities. And uh, I think uh, um, the the person who speak in the introduction before me, the managing director of SAP Bulgaria, put really the example. Um, we are close to a model that uh, sounds familiar from the telcos. Uh, what's the price of the, of the telephone line anymore? Is the services that is around that, is the information, the data. So we are moving into a, a data-driven model that is also the benefits coming more from the services than from the traditional consumption which is just enabling the business transactions so uh, in this case the company is focused in in the in one of the dimensions which is the asset management part so they decided to make a, a kind of a roadmap a transition from uh, that model into the new one how to enable it support from the technical asset management perspective, construction, maintenance, etc. And they use our portfolio in several projects to do it. You might see that the dates are quite antique. It's, it's about four or five years ago, but that was the plan. Now, actually, uh, the CIO of this company, Chris Ford, uh, who survived this way because uh, Chris Ford made that presentation some years ago, already posted a video in YouTube showing the benefits of that implementation. And also there is a document that shows uh, which are the benefits and the capabilities enabled by doing this transformation. So the message for us is, is that we understand what is going on. And also we help companies to manage this transition to the new energy models. Mm -hmm. uh, landing more in detail, uh, there are three dimensions, as I, as I said, that is, is, are being disrupted currently now. One is the customer dimension, the relationship with the customer, also mentioned in the introduction. The infrastructure, already mentioned this example, but we will see another one. And the energy itself, the energy data, the metering, as also was said, is totally different way of handling this. So when we go for customer, we, we bring here one use case, in this case from the US, a company called Duke Energy. For those who do not know, even uh, Amer um, Cham is American Chamber, um, Duke Energy is the largest electricity company in the US. And uh, they presented recently um, one, one use case entitled Transforming to the Future. So how they are focusing in that future that was painted by the peers of Australia. And how do you do it? they do that? By focusing in the customer. This is about market liberalization. This is a new way of information. This is the energy transition is going on. So we need to address the customer in a different way, much more detailed. We need to understand who they are. We need to understand what they want, what they can desire, and, and bring in constantly campaigns of quality. So it's a new generation of, of IT that is supporting that approach. And uh, in a summary, the architecture of this, uh, it goes in the following. You see the core business is this box in, in, in blue, dark blue, is called meter to cash. Meter to cash stands for the traditional approach that we had in the commercial uh, area for utilities, which is read a contract, build a contract, uh, uh, invoice, and then collect the money. But that's not enough. So now you need also a, a dimension for non-regulated. This is uh, quotations, competitions. You rely on data 
lot of information to go on, and then you create information about your customers. And based on that information on your customers, you split into omni-channel, multi-channels to interact with them, services, sales, self-service tools like mobility, marketing campaigns, anything based on that data and the customer profiles. So we provide all the tools, as you can see here on the right, to enable that shift into the customer-oriented applications in this new or, uh, generation. Now, moving from customer to energy data, the example goes to China. This is China Light and Power, mostly Hong Kong city and area. Um, and uh, they present how they handle smart metering data, which is no longer, you know, uh, one value every month or two months if you don't do estimations. It's a constant pumping of information about the consumption every five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes or one hour, depending on the settings and the regulations. Now, that information has relevance not only for the billing pur purposes anymore, but you see from the customer the multi amount of services and things you can do with them, different rates, settings, uh, uh, load control, uh, uh, demand generation programs, but also has a dimension that information is relevant also for the operation of the grid, for the smart grid, to detect fraud, to detect uh, uh, balancing, etc. So it is the center point of, of the, all the changes in the infrastructure that are occurring. Now, what's the interesting thing of, of this presentation is that they built the architecture, of course, uh, integrating all the smart meter infrastructure with SAP. But for those who understand a little bit what is a smart meter integration, you will see that it's missing a box because this is a two-tier integration. We integrate directly the commercial system, the billing system, with the smart meters, what is called the head end systems. You don't need that instance, that huge database called the meter data management. You don't need it. With, uh, with the capabilities of our technology moving into in memory, we have enough capabilities of speed and volume to digest directly the data. And we provide also the connectors. This is a detailed, more detailed of the uh, um, a slide on that presentation and shows the, the high level architecture of the integration from the smart meter data. And this piece called EDM in SAP, we call it uh, in, in Japanese energy data management, stands for the, 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 the meter data repository that collects all this. Uh, just for volume, uh, um, CLP is about 3 million meters and is productive going on, etc. Um, finally, for the asset management part, we did already the part of the infrastructure of a distributor with that example of South Australia networks. Let me bring in something about power generation. And um, uh, the selected example is in Europe. It's a company based on, on Sweden called Battenfall. And um, they have assets in power generation from wind farms, etc. But the interesting thing is a project called Hack IT. Hack is, uh, you know, uh, to, to hack a person, but means the merge. And it goes with the most complex and sophisticated assets that exist, which is the nuclear power plants. Why are so relevant? Because a nuclear power plant maintenance system cannot have an error. There is zero problems, because if not, we have a problem. So that's very high reliability and very high uh, sensibility systems. They have to be highly reliable, highly secure. Now, what these guys presented is, is for me, the credentials of SAP as relevant and reliable supplier of systems of maintenance for nuclear power plants. Because what they did is they bring the systems of two nuclear power plants in the same box, not isolated, but together. Why? Because they can leverage information among one each other, uh, but uh, about engineering change management, etc. but it decreases highly the TCO. So they are so secure on the high fiability and reliability of the systems that now they can put it everything in a single box and also they can have very low TCO of a standard solution. 
So that's the credential, how feasible is a system of maintenance that we provide support in this way for nuclear power plants. Now, um, as a summary of, of this introduction, um, what uh, is, is SAP providing? Um, yeah, we provide that solutions for more than 4,000 utilities worldwide, the billing system for UCD dimension, we work uh, with uh, companies' assets, we work with power generation companies, and now the point is, it is always the same system, always the same solution. How can you make it? Because you can configure it, not develop, configure. And that make, makes the, the, the idea that the software, both for commercial processes or even the back office, is a commodity. Is you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can focus in innovation because those things are com commodities already, are products already done. And the key effects is the automatism, standardization, low TCO. And, and that's the platform where you can address then the challenges of market liberalization and energy transition. And that leads to the next level, which is intelligence. Now, how do we deliver that new capability, which is the intelligence? By understanding, again, um, what are the needs of the market? And this is a, a, a picture about the energy mix of the, of the countries. You see in black, uh, the coal, why they select this color, other fossils in green, uh, white in nuclear, and then the renewable impact in green. You see the, the model in Bulgaria, and, and this is a time shift, and in Bulgaria, you see that they are moving from a very stable model of energy in the country, where it's basically two models. You have a very thick nuclear stable power generation, and then you have a, a, a kind of balancing with coal base, which is also very stable. No, it's, it's a basically two energy mix. Now, currently is entering green data, uh, green energy, which is uh, uh, renewables, uh, probably uh, uh, wind farms, solar, etc. And this is an increasing um, uh, um, mix of energy, not only in Bulgaria, you see other countries, look uh, below in UK, for example, or and that's uh, um, uh, energy that is unstable, unpredictable in some extent. So the from the efficiency of the stability of the model, which is the automatisms and the systems, we are moving into something that needs flexibility, constant change, adapting, like the smart grid. So that flexibility means that we move from a process that was automated into a process that is intelligence. You need to rely on algorithms, on something beyond the, 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 the transactional system to help uh, human people to pursue that job. It's not anymore just uh, typing things on, on, the, on the keypads. You need algorithms and, and based on the experience data, based on history, uh, to support those things. So um, how from SAP we identify those areas that require intelligence to develop? And uh, we created, uh, in a, in, not only for utilities, but for other industries, what we call the advisory councils. In those advisory councils, we meet on a regular basis. This is the, 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 the uh, a snapshot of, of the agenda for the last year meeting. Uh, of course, this current year took place virtual. Um, and uh, from those meetings, uh, where comes relevant companies around the world, we understand the vision and uh, we derive in the future directions. Because those companies, as you, um, are investing in SAP software. And uh, they want that when there is a new upgrade, that upgrade contains that functionality that they need for the future. Because we are, we, we are becoming suppliers of solutions, commoditized solutions or commoditized tools for the present and the future. Because if not, we are not protecting your investment. So taking this responsibility, um, what we are moving is, is a, a balancing where we provide a platform with technology where the 80% is commoditized, as we showed before. 
but we provide the settings and the functionalities to go into that innovation area and, and provide intelligence for about 20% of the content, resulting something like this conceptually. Um, we can have time to understand and, and explain this more in detail, but I think that it will be better to continue with the use cases. So if we go into the use cases um, in the dimension of customers, how do we apply intelligence in this? And um, of course, we we try to be fair and, 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 and honest. And we are software engineers. Uh, we have experience in your business, but we are not in the edge. It's you, you your companies uh, are in this edge. So we look permanently with for partners whom to collaborate and design together that future because it's a win-win proposal. We can provide the tools to address the future. This is the, the nature of an agreement that we recently published uh, uh, with E.ON, with uh, this huge distribution company that also now is, is merging with the assets of distribution from Inogy, a former RWE. And uh, we are working on, on that platform. Now, let me put one example of the outcome of, of this collaboration. And this is a, a tool that uh, contains data at municipality level of the distribution network. And the distribution network is not only the substation and the cables, also the points of, of, of consumption that you know by profile uh, based on the smart meters, but also uh, you can discuss with that municipality the impact of the green energy production in that network and provides, based on that big data platform, as you can see on the left side, some simulation tools about the, the installation of solar panels or, or other elements that provide energy, also uh, uh, electric charges for vehicles, and simulates and, and results how much do you need to invest and also what is the, the, the outcome of that investment, how, many, how long you need to, to have a return of that investment. So it's a simulation tool that enables distribution company to sit together with the major of a, of a city, of a, of a municipality. And from that uh, uh, discussion, you can trigger projects and, and, and business. It's a business enabled tool. Um, moving into the next, uh, let me see, yeah. The next dimension, we have what relies the big data. And from big data, we move into Brazil, a company called ElectroPaulo. The presentation was done originally on, on ElectroPaulo was an AES company. Now it's uh, Enel. Mm? They, they have swatch, uh, swap data set. Um, so what this company do with, with the big data? So they look for mm, the best profile of people to collect money because they have a, a large amount, uh, they have uh, more than 10 million, I think, well, several million customers, and they want to understand by analytical and, and placing an artificial intelligence, which is the most feasible payment probabilities from the customers. So let they create on, on our platform a predictive, uh, using the predictive analytic tool um, models to calibrate the customers, and then uh, those campaigns that they had performance dashboards. Mm, this is the architecture. Of course, the data sources are the data warehouse, the billing history, customer data, etc. Now, the outcome is this. They could classify all their customer base based on the risk of collection. So then every time there is a dunning, the system classifies them by different categories. So this guy is, ah, oh, he made a mistake. It's, it's usually it's feasible. Now this one is normally uh, 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 distracted, but they will correct themselves. Just forget about uh, uh, going there. But this one is usual debtor, you know, the different profiles, and then they can focus the teams. So then, because the teams to collect are limited in the resources. So they focus where the money is, where they are more assurance that they will get revenue out of that. And that improves very much the collection. So it's a large business case for the company. 
Of course, all this is based on, on dashboardings and, and constant analytics, and the system needs to be trained uh, on constant basis to keep it in fit. This is an example. Now, if we go for the infrastructure dimension, then um, the example is chosen by Enel. Enel, not only as the Italian company, but as a, as a worldwide uh, um, energy company. Why do we focus in, in this concept of worldwide? Because their idea is to go and, and, and really take advantage of the capabilities of now create an abstraction of the physical assets, what we call the digital twin. Now we can create a, a repository where, oh, sorry, where we have all the capabilities, all the information from an asset, not only the definition, but the, the failure modes, uh, the recommendations, also the designs, the diagrams, and even um, the, the, the building construction settings in a standardized way as a package. So based on that, uh, what they call building information model, they can create that repository where any company of the, of the group can pull down that model and use it in their systems. Hmm? Substation model, transformer model, etc. So they make a very, very efficient asset database. This is the, the final architecture. You see here the systems that consume the information, and this is the template um, architecture. And um, another example that uh, we have almost too close to finish this presentation, to leave time for Q&A, is uh, the capability to manage on a spatial base all the information. So if you work in, an, in, a, in a transactional system, it could be SAP or any other, you see the information on lists. But uh, this is a water company. They understood that now SAP, in this case is for HANA, can store maps in, in the same system as the transactional. So then they, instead of having those lists and the map in, in, in one beside the other, what they do is they merge all together. This is an SAP S4 HANA snapshot. So you can have the map, mostly could be from GIS system that you bring in, and that you can have different objects activate from the system, or you can activate pre-coded business layers. And from those business layers, you can then take decisions or whether consult documents or maybe trigger directly a transaction or check an object in the system. So it's a map-based interface. Think about customers, think about the territory of a water company or a distributor. You can see things on the map directly. Uh, in, the, in their case, they created two map environments, uh, one for the sewer or the wastewater network, another one for the drinking water network, and then they configure which actions of the system they wanted to do here, lists, uh, transactions, but also all the different uh, user interface capabilities and bullet points. It's a framework. We call it geographical enablement framework. Uh, with those examples, uh, I entered in the conclusions part, and this is how do we enable uh, uh, those capabilities in your companies? The first example is Inogy. Uh, that uh, they presented this, this uh, business transformation, uh, and it was a large journey. It's not a single step, and this is why we bring back uh, uh, the, the, the previous role. RWE, which was a, a profile of a very nuclear and, 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 and coal-based power generation into a green company, and they use S4HANA uh, as a target system to accumulate all the necessities of the company for this new endeavor. Energy is, is IT driven uh, uh, through S4 HANA, uh, and this even they list the, the capabilities and the benefits of that transition. Now, the other example, and I need uh, to, to rush a little bit just to enable the, the Q&A, is uh, from America. IS Corporation is a little bit like NL, which is a, um, an, in, uh, the, um, an international company. But uh, as American Chamber is hosting this, this event, uh, this conversation, so we try to bring one example from there. And uh, they also um, show the 
the necessity of this transition. They call it uh, opportunities, but it's standardization, address the new challenges in the energy transition, but also uh, the technical obsolescence of the systems after several years. So they choose to go to S4 HANA and they they merge in, in that journey three systems into one. So they get a lot of benefits out of that. And they show, and, and we can share the use case, all the steps technically, which are the lessons learned, et cetera. So we not only show benefits, but also we can share experiences because this transition is already ongoing. And with that, I go for, I thank you very much for your interest and I open for uh, Q&A. Hey, Danny, um, I, I'm not sure if we have already questions on, on the blog. Otherwise, I, I have a few questions I can get us started. It's uh, up to you. Let me know. Sure. Uh, many thanks, Mikhail. It was uh, very exciting, a very exciting global trip uh, across information and applications of SAP. And your, your cases show, uh, showed quite a uh, huge impact. Olivier, many thanks for, for stepping in. Indeed, there are no questions so far. Uh, if, if you have such, uh, please go ahead. Okay. Well, f first and, uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm from AS, right? And, and so I want to say that I was actually surprised it was not, uh, pre agreed between SAP that AS would be displayed so prominently. Uh, but you know, I, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, and indeed, I mean, we, we are working, I mean, we are a, a SAP customer and uh, indeed we've been working in many of our markets. So I think everything that was said, indeed, I, I can, I can relate to. Um, and, uh, so I have two, two, two things that uh, I would like to, to get a bit more, uh, information and, and, and discussion going. The first one, when you started the presentation about the, the tools for customer engagement, uh, and indeed, I mean, the, 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 it's a complete change in the customer experience by the, the amount of information that you can provide to the customer. Uh, and the, the, the key question is obviously how you create value from that, right? And so, uh, I'm interested to, to hear maybe additional thoughts on, um, you know, what, what do you think, uh, is the, the value created for, for the company, for the utility? Uh, from providing, uh, uh, you know, more information. And I understand that probably it's about, uh, additional services sold, but when you, any, uh, any thoughts on, uh, on, on this dimension of uh, value creation, I think is interesting because sometimes, I mean, the, the, the issue with these tools is you see the cost, but, uh, you know, not necessarily immediately the benefits, right? So I, I'd like to hear on that. Um, yeah. and then, uh, so that's my first question on, on these customer, uh, engagement tools. Uh, and the second one is you, you focused a lot on, the, on the utilities, on the, the transmission, uh, and distribution side. Uh, I would be also interested if you guys have tools on the, uh, generation side, which is effectively on optimizing, uh, the, uh, uh efficiency, heat rates, uh, in general, the operation, uh, of, uh, generation assets. I, I would also be interested in, in hearing about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if I'm having uh, uh, enough time to replay everything, but uh, uh, I cannot avoid mentioning uh, AES is a, a, a global company. Uh, my department is global. Uh, that's why I feel very comfortable uh, uh, engaging with, with uh, AES. Uh, my last uh, meeting with them was in AES El Salvador in <laughs> Central America, uh, maybe because of my Spanish language background. Uh, Amazing. And, and uh, just to put one example in focus, uh, AES is a very professional organization, at least for, from SAP perspective, and it's not just to, to uh, a gentle comment for you. Uh, and I put you one example. AES Electro Paulo later on was uh, uh, transferred financially, now is NL Group. They had an extremely professional, or they have, IT department created by AES organization all these years. And that example of artificial intelligence that I show was taken over by the NL Group and is used as a standard and rollout entirely worldwide basis. And it's a mindset uh, originally from AES because that team was created by AES. Just to place that example. 
Um, regarding customers, that's true. And I put you one example on on those investments on, on customer facing. Some years ago, I met a, a um, I had I had a workshop in Paris with a utility there. You can imagine how many utilities are in France. So uh, that's not necessarily needs to to mention the name. But uh, they were considering that thing. I, I need to do something because market is liberalizing. Also, this energy transition. I need to invest in something, but I, I need to be smart. And they said, and look, uh, before you tell me anything, I will show you one example. Uh, we spend, we have this website, wonderful website with a lot of features, anything. But if we go in the list of the 500 most uh, uh, um, interesting and visited websites in the world, there are zero utilities. Not only ours, it's zero utilities. And you know what? In number uh, 450, you can have one is just dedicated for pets, cats. No, So it's, uh, uh, utilities is not attractive in, in the terms of charming. So to make uh, 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 nice things, uh, web applications or, or things for, for citizens for electricity and gas, that's not where the business is. Now, another thing is that uh, you made a campaign very easily, and you said, we finance you to put in the rooftop a solar panel, okay? And the solar panel, uh, you need just a device to control things, and uh, you can automatically switch in, uh, all the energy produced, goes to your energy uh, in, in your house, and later on, the smart meter makes the balance and gives you the statistic, okay? So you can control that with that this app. In this app, you can see how the, the energy is produced and, and things like that. Very simple. And then you can also see in the bill how much of your energy consumption comes from that, uh, uh, that appliance and how much did you get it from the utility. Easy. This is people buys. They, they make cues out of that because people understand that thing. They understand the business case and they go for that. It's a kind of gamification. It's a mobile app. You don't need a laptop. It's a mobile app. You download it and you go for that. And this is the, we call it services. But this is where companies are focusing to provide these kind of things. Very clear, and that's a business. Customer retention, et cetera. Um, that's example. By the way, average return of investment for this solar panel, 10 years. And uh, you save about 30, 40% consumption and, and as an average. Uh, and regarding tools for power generation, I show an example of asset management for a nuclear power plant. Uh, if we enter into the, uh, uh, we are now co-developing, that's true, uh, a solution with some companies in the region for flexibility of resources for trading. And the reason is that uh, no, trading is not only of energy is not only occurring once a day, it's occurring on a spot market on, on, on very constant basis. So there is a wide space because uh, companies, in order to trade the spot, they need a extremely accurate forecast. They need to know really what they want, what they have in order to commit in, in this short term trading. And, and this is what we are working on. And if any company is interested, we can show and even bring in, in into these discussions. Uh, Miguel, this is Fritz. Um, I will have a, a slide about the EOI uh, and the prototypes. So <laughs> it would also answer the question, but I will not do it now but in my presentation. No, but uh, is I think I'm I'm done because uh, it's it's my time is over. So maybe I it's now time to hand over to you. I guess. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Miguel. Thank you very much, Olivia, for this uh, intriguing question. And uh, Fritz, now live from Kaiserslautern, if I'm correct. Yeah. All Just right. Kaiserslautern in the Palatinate Forest uh, in Palatine Germany. Forest. <laughs> yeah. The floor is yours. Many thanks for joining us. And, okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, I'm uh, Fritz Schwarzländer. I'm more or less a dinosaurier in the energy industry, uh, working for more than, than 30 years now. Uh, for RWE, ENBW, and uh, for SAP. And uh, my presentation is a little bit different because I um, focus more 
uh, on uh, business topics. And I uh, will not go into the very details of every slide. They will be handed out for further reading. Uh, but if there is an uh, interest uh, for uh, a more a deep dive uh, on the one or the other uh, topic or project, uh, we can uh, organize this uh, after the, um, uh, this webinar today. So uh, I have uh, two uh, key topics uh, for today. Uh, one uh, is the innovations uh, for the future energy system that we see across Europe and uh, where the European Commission is investing lots of money. For example, the Horizon 2020 program, uh, which comes to an end now uh, this year, was dedicating uh, some, in average, 500 million euros a year in research and innovation uh, in uh, uh, the energy sector, in the electricity sector uh, only. Uh, um, and uh, SAP uh, is also deeply engaged here, and this is what we will see uh, in uh, the presentation and the topics uh, where we are engaged. And the other presentation uh, is yeah, somehow related uh, to the innovation. It's about the market liberalization and the uh, uh, unbundling. Uh, so uh, I will show uh, something from my experience and uh, the lessons learned because uh, I was uh, experienced this uh, hands-on uh, starting uh, end of the uh, 1990s uh, when I was working for RWE and following up with all these uh, liberalization and competitive market topics uh, at uh, ENBW later on. And um, I give you an overview uh, what uh, happened uh, in Europe uh, and uh, um, uh, what is uh, relevant uh, uh, to do uh, to enter a liberalized and competitive market. And the relation between these two topics is uh, um, a com real competitive liberalized energy market is more or less the prerequisite for the innovations. It's not a mandatory prerequisite, uh, but at least uh, it's uh, a huge uh, leverage. So innovation topics, let me start with the why. Why is SAP engaging here uh, in future um, uh, energy system topics? And uh, when we look here at the strategic goals uh, from Europe, like uh, the um, and worldwide and the greenhouse uh, gas reduction uh, or the digital transformation uh, in the energy sector, distributed generation renewables, uh, and the industry agenda of the EU to become uh, number one in the renewables worldwide, to have the consumer at the center of the uh, future energy system, uh, and of course, uh, the efficient energy systems. Uh, then there is uh, lots of things in for SAP. Oh, there is an overlap with this. Okay. Uh, and uh, because here uh, we want to uh, engage uh, with our customers uh, in the core uh, business innovations uh, to uh, develop uh, uh, the models uh, that uh, will become uh, the, uh, um, the basics uh, for our future IT systems. And uh, another uh, topic is uh, this allows us to open new business opportunities for SAP itself. So not only about software uh, technology uh, like our uh, um, uh, cloud uh, platform or uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence and, and so on, uh, but also uh, new uh, areas uh, in, in the industry uh, that we did not uh, cover or only to a small extent in the past, for example, in the energy transmission business. Now, when you talk to uh, somebody from a um, uh, uh, transmission company, uh, then they say SAP is bookkeeping. Huh? Uh, and this changed uh, with the innovation projects you will see. 
and uh, also uh, the completely new area of energy uh, related uh, services and energy service companies. Of course, we will introduce our new uh, technologies and we will build uh, prototypes uh, that might become uh, a standard uh, in, in the future. So this is uh, more or less about the why and something, ah, now it works. There was some some delay uh, in the internet. So, uh, and uh, um, when it comes to the how, the first topic here is uh, we uh, engage uh, in um, either in industry uh, organization uh, or <clears throat> uh, a smart grid uh, initiatives uh, worldwide. So, for example, we were participating in the Gridwise Alliance in the US. The main focus in Europe uh, is the European technology and in innovation platform on smart grids and that is uh, developing the strategic uh, research agendas. And there is, for example, ESMIC, an industry organization in uh, the beginning, uh, they focused more on some a second. Yeah, Daniel, can you mute everyone? Yeah, yeah Nada will do that as well. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and uh, Ismik uh, was focusing on uh, metering, smart metering uh, in, in the beginning as an industry organization. Uh, now uh, with a more shift uh, to the consumer engagement. So uh, this were the and uh, when we follow up uh, with uh, uh, what we did in the past, and there was um, I would call it a research period. So some 2006, seven to 2015, where we uh, engaged in close to 20 different projects. Uh, and these projects uh, were all about gaining experience with new technologies. So, for example, a peer to peer trading or uh, uh, aggregating uh, flexibility, uh, uh, building uh, local uh, energy communities and, and uh, support them. Uh, and also, with a delay of a few years, three, four years, uh, entering uh, the electromobility area. For example, here, uh, we um, developed uh, with our partners uh, uh, a, roaming, a roaming. Sorry, Nadia, we still have some background noise. I, I don't know what's happening, but uh, can you make sure that only Fritz is unmuted? Yeah. Oh, maybe this, this background noise is from the internet itself. Sometimes it happens. Okay, and now it sounds good. I hear. Uh, Nothing. So uh, there were uh, lots of projects and we had an own research organization in, in energy, some 15, 20 people uh, uh, based in, in Karlsruhe, close to the university. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, KIT, uh, that's um, a research institute uh, with the Karlsruhe University uh, and uh, so we were gaining a lot of experience and all these projects uh, were more on a lab level, so small prototypes uh, to, to learn. And um, if somebody is interested uh, in the whole scope of the project uh, or needs uh, more information on the one or the other project, I can provide this afterwards, no problem. And now uh, when uh, we switch uh, to the present. Uh, it looks a little bit different. So there are not so many uh, projects, but huge uh, prototype uh, projects. So these are the examples uh, from Horizon uh, 2020 uh, and from uh, the German government. And um, I uh, was participating in all of these projects and uh, managing them. There were a few uh, other from other colleagues. I focus here on, on my own projects. And uh, these are projects where we have always some yeah, 12 uh, to 15 partners across Europe. So uh, uh, big utilities, 
uh, research institutes, uh, universities, uh, uh, technology uh, companies, uh, and uh, they build uh, huge uh, prototypes uh, at a higher technology readiness level, uh, close uh, to uh, productization. And uh, um, one uh, of them, the Flexicency uh, project, uh, that's already uh, finalized. Uh, this was a Europe uh, a prototype for a European-wide marketplace where we bring uh, together providers of data and data-related services uh, with uh, the energy service companies or other companies um, that need this data for their business. Uh, so uh, I always use the example, uh, you have an engineering company based in Munich uh, and you want to do business uh, with McDonald's in Italy and do the energy controlling uh, across Italy for them. Then you have a problem. Uh, and this marketplace uh, uh, solves the problem and, and does the, the matchmaking. Uh, future flow, I mentioned before uh, that we have little footprint uh, beyond uh, uh, core uh, administrative uh, and, and financial and HR topics in uh, the area of transmission company. Uh, this is uh, future flow is different. Uh, in future flow, we were uh, working together with four TSOs uh, from uh, Austria, Slovenia, Hungary, and Romania. And we developed a, a platform that allows a cross-border exchange uh, of uh, balancing reserves, um, uh, secondary or AFRR reserves, as they are called. Uh, and in, in this platform works under real-time conditions and is connected to the SCADA systems uh, of the four countries. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, the purpose here is to solve uh, an, an area control error, so a deviation in the frequency uh, that uh, starts in one country uh, by, for example, activating in a completely different country flexibilities. Uh, and there's a huge uh, model behind uh, that calculates then the effect uh, of the, the flexibility um, uh, activation um, and uh, how it contributes uh, to solving the uh, uh, underlying area control error. So this was the first time this was done and we were very successful, you can see. Uh, we won uh, the ISCAN uh, Prestige Award uh, in 2020 uh, uh, for excellence. And, uh, and another uh, topic here in future flow was uh, that uh, these uh, bits for secondary uh, reserves are also based on aggregated flexibility from uh, the four participating countries. So uh, this was pure research and therefore we also uh, received uh, a better funding from the European Commission. And the next project, Integrate, uh, this is still ongoing. So this is my uh, favorite uh, project uh, at the moment. Uh, there uh, we have uh, some uh, certain use cases, uh, big demonstrators on providing flexibility, uh, engaging uh, customers uh, uh, better in, in demand side, uh, uh, activities uh, uh, based on, on uh, social media and uh, uh, gamification techniques, uh, but uh, we also have uh, services here for the distribution uh, companies and our focus was to build uh, a regional marketplace, so operated by the DSO. Flexicency was something different uh, at the European level and uh, here uh, it's a marketplace for the DSO where he provides uh, uh, required services from the regulation, uh, uh, but also additional services. I will show you a little bit about this. And uh, I think you can see Trade EV. Uh, this was uh, a project about uh, at, at our own campus in Waldorf uh, to connect all. Uh, the energy assets and especially the electric uh, vehicle fleet uh, for um, an uh, optimized uh, uh, 
um, dynamic uh, charging of the electric vehicles and uh, an optimized uh, energy uh, purchase. Uh, also participating via an aggregator, it's called E2M, as you see here on the slide, uh, in, in uh, um, uh, the intraday market uh, and, and the balancing market. Yeah, and here is uh, the example from uh, the Integrate project, the Grid and Market Hub. So the Grid and Market Hub is a cloud-based solution uh, that connects the distribution company uh, with the market players and the energy markets. And, uh, and it's uh, enabling uh, B2B and B2C uh, services. Uh, and it's a uh, uh, facilitator of, of new business models. And uh, uh, we see here an example services that are provided uh, via this grid and market hub. So for example, there is for the end customers, uh, the share my data service, uh, where you can give access to an energy service company uh, uh, to your uh, energy data at the DSO. We have B2C service, the traffic light concept. That's very interesting. Uh, this is based on a prediction for the next day of the status of the whole distribution grid, including all uh, the distributed renewable generation. Uh, and then uh, this uh, traffic light uh, um, examines and validates offers for flexibility for the next day uh, if they would cause, uh, when they get activated, uh, any harm to the distribution grid. Uh, and for example, uh, ending up in a, in a congestion. This is also a completely new topic, uh, um, and it refers mainly to restoration reserves, so tertiary reserves with a huge amount of energy. Uh, and so far, uh, the uh, transmission uh, companies activated this, uh, uh, not knowing what will happen in the distribution grids, no? if the wires are melting no? <laughs> and uh, lines are switched off or not. And with this solution, uh, you can get, let's say, certified and validate flexibility. No? Or there is, uh, for example, um, uh, at the B2C side, the residential energy sizing. Uh, so this is for end customers uh, where they provide access uh, to their historic data. Uh, some additional data about their location and their house, uh, their plans to invest in photovoltaics. And then uh, this is uh, uh, calculating several scenarios for best investment in uh, um, uh, 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 photovoltaics, uh, storage, uh, and uh, the return on investment and make some proposal. And this is a service that runs in a completely different system. Uh, but it's provided uh, via this grid and market hub. And uh, a completely different topic uh, here, also in Integrate. Uh, we uh, were working on this with uh, the uh, distributor in Sweden, Elevio, uh, former FOTOM, uh, and uh, EDP distribution in Portugal. A research institute and and uh, university in Kazakhstan uh, to uh, develop algorithms for uh, the predictive maintenance of dry transformer stations uh, and based on sensor data the characteristics of the transformer uh, uh, historic failure information in the fleet uh, we have now a holistic model uh, that provides us with the remaining useful lifetime of a transformer the probability of failure uh, in, at, at the current stage uh, and the real physical age, which is completely different in many cases from the calendar age. So, good. So these were uh, current projects. Uh, when we look uh, at the uh, future uh, and, and also ongoing uh, more co-innovation, so these are not uh, um, public funded uh, research and innovation projects uh, uh, from uh, uh, the, the, the public side, uh, but these are co uh, direct co-innovations with our customers. Uh, so there is one focus topic, uh, the uh, sector coupling between automotive and utilities. Uh, 
uh, to provide uh, 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 full uh, end-to-end uh, uh, mobility service. Uh, so, for example, when uh, you have uh, um, an own charging station uh, and it does not work, uh, that you are uh, uh, immediately provided uh, with with a solution to to fix this on the one side and on the other side, uh, it directly shows you the next uh, possible uh, charging option uh, that uh, you can do uh, your uh, trip uh, that you have planned. Uh, and uh, there, our IBU utilities, where Miguel comes from, uh, and our uh, automotive uh, colleagues uh, work uh, together to to integrate this. And here is an uh, example from our sub lab in France. Uh, that's their campus, uh, where they have uh, several uh, parking lots with charging stations. Uh, they also have uh, photovoltaics, uh, uh, rooftop uh, solar panels, uh, and they do a dynamic charging uh, based on the availability uh, of solar power, uh, but also uh, on uh, the availability uh, on uh, the spot market. Uh, and uh, this, um, there is a, a new uh, public funded project now um, that uh, um, is uh, intended to uh, productize uh, all these solutions. And uh, the um, uh, overall uh, approach uh, for charge point uh, operations uh, here uh, uh, with the support of our uh, sub uh, e mobility solutions is to bring together the, the charging at home, the charging at work uh, and the public charging. Um, there is uh, also a new project, it's also public funded from the German government. Uh, it's close to approval uh, to uh, how to integrate private charging infrastructure into the uh, public infrastructure so that you can charge at the private uh, uh, um, charging spot uh, as well, uh, maybe uh, using uh, your uh, 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 own uh, contracted energy. Uh, and the, uh, the owner uh, of this charging uh, spot gets refunded. And there are uh, already several solutions in place. I will not go here in, into any detail um, that uh, are available uh, in this context. And there is another uh, stream, the second stream, that's the custom evolution uh, that uh, Miguel uh, also mentioned. And we have uh, today the traditional customer uh, that uh, just uses electricity uh, uh, and we have the customer in, in transition that uh, selects uh, the best supplier from various suppliers, maybe from uh, price comparison uh, portals uh, and uh, that already uh, requests uh, uh, non-commodity services uh, for example, this offering uh, for uh, residential energy. And then finally, uh, what we see, uh, this is the private uh, prosumer uh, that owns uh, some own production, maybe has his own uh, uh, charging, uh, uh, point, uh, uh, um, charging uh, spot and an uh, electric vehicle. He's part of an energy community and what, uh, whatever. And this is the of uh, uh, focus uh, of our development, how uh, to support uh, these uh, prosumers uh, from uh, the utilities uh, point of view. Um, and there we have uh, already a working prototype uh, based on different uh, cloud solutions uh, from uh, uh, analytics uh, to marketing uh, to, uh, to billing uh, where we uh, analyze uh, the uh, the customer or the available uh, technical uh, data, data about consumption, social media data, uh, then uh, we can uh, proactively propose a, a product, uh, then uh, uh, make the contract, uh, orchestrate and activate uh, the delivery of the service. So for example, when it's uh, uh, 
um, uh, contracting uh, for uh, uh, PV uh, installation, uh, uh, including uh, uh, the maintenance and insurance, everything, and uh, operating this. Um, and the service is activated. There is some billing and then a continuous uh, monitoring. Uh, and finally, a proposal uh, for upsell. And uh, this is uh, uh, a slide uh, about uh, power generation, and uh, we have, um, uh, it's also a, a huge prototype, but it's implemented now uh, at one customer in Poland and one customer in Germany. Uh, this is our uh, energy operation and intelligence platform. And there we work close together with technology partners. This is uh, STEAG uh, and uh, PROCOM. Uh, because uh, these are the engineers. We are not the engineers. Huh? Uh, and uh, you can only uh, handle this together uh, with these engineering companies. And this platform uh, on the one side uh, does the health monitoring of all your uh, generation assets, huh? your whole generation fleet, uh, including uh, maybe combined heat power plants, uh, a wind park, uh, photovoltaics, so it manages the whole uh, fleet uh, and has the status uh, on, on the performance and the availability of the fleet. And on the other side, it connects with the energy market. Uh, this is where uh, PROCOM uh, comes in into the game, uh, uh, monitoring uh, the, uh, um, the prices uh, at, at the energy market, especially the, the intraday uh, market. Uh, and uh, then uh, our solution makes a decision for uh, um, uh, for uh, a trading and the trading portfolio, but also uh, the other way around. We use this uh, also in a public funded project uh, um, to make uh, decisions uh, when it's cheaper to procure energy or uh, also decisions uh, uh, when it, uh, it is good uh, to do some maintenance on some assets uh, in the fleet uh, because there is a huge wind production and then you can uh, do some maintenance, for example, at the combined heat power plants. Um, and uh, the um, and uh, this is an, um, yeah, it's more than, than a prototype. It's not yet a standard product. Uh, but uh, close uh, to the standard. If you are interested in this topic, uh, I would engage uh, my colleague uh, who is uh, managing this. Yeah, and uh, last innovation topic, um, it's just the vision, uh, but we will participate in Gaia-X. Maybe you have heard of this, that's the uh, European Data Space Initiative. It was uh, initiated by um, the ministries of economy in France and in Germany, uh, but it's now uh, also uh, promoted uh, by the whole European Commission uh, to build uh, data spaces, industry specific data spaces uh, for uh, the uh, exchange uh, of information in the industry uh, throughout Europe. Uh, and uh, we want to engage there uh, also uh, with. Uh, the energy sector uh, uh, and leveraging uh, the results uh, that we gained from the flexicity and uh, the integrate project uh, to provide uh, a platform uh, where energy service companies, for example, uh, can uh, get the necessary data, either real time or historic, um, uh, for uh, 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 for their business. Just as uh, one example. Yeah, so this was uh, about innovations uh, uh, where we are uh, engaged and, and also um, the in innovations that uh, happen in the market itself. And now I come to my second topic, uh, which is uh, the market uh, liberalization and its implications. Uh, when we do some short uh, recap, uh, we see uh, that all markets in the meantime in Europe are liberalized and open, um, especially for commercial and industrial customers, uh, and in most cases also for household customers. There are only a, for, a few countries left uh, where there are some 
consumption thresholds uh, for household customers to participate in the market, uh, like it's the case in, in Bulgaria and, uh, and uh, a few other countries. And we also have a few countries where there is a uh, full liberalization of metering. But uh, to be honest, uh, so from my personal opinion, uh, this does not really make sense. And it's not accepted in the market. Uh, in Germany, we have it, uh, but there are no uh, uh, competing uh, metering companies. 98, 99 percentage of the metering is still done by the DSO. And then uh, the switching rate in the competitive market, uh, they are uh, quite different. Uh, and uh, the main reason for this is that, especially in Eastern Europe, we still see lots of regulated prices. And as long as this is the case, no uh, competition, no supplier switching will happen even uh, uh, if there are enough eligible customers. Uh, and <clears throat> I uh, edit here uh, from an old study. Unfortunately, uh, this was discontinued. So the last slide is from and last survey is from 2013, uh, where we can see switching rates per year uh, of uh, up to more than 25 percentage of the customer base. Uh, and uh, but this is outside Europe. Uh, in Western Europe, we are around six, seven, eight percentage uh, uh, per year. Uh, so this is already a huge amount. No? For example, Germany, uh, we have some 40 million points of delivery, uh, um, six to seven uh, percentage. Uh, that's um, around about 2.5 million customer switches a year. Uh, and if you do this manually, you can imagine um, you will need round about an hour uh, across the industry uh, to handle this. So this needs full automation. In in Eastern Europe, okay, we are still uh, low. And uh, when you have <clears throat> when you, when you start uh, with a competitive market, uh, in the beginning you can handle this manually. Uh, but when the switching rates uh, rise up to three four percentage, uh, you need a full automation. And <clears throat> uh, yeah, then uh, when it comes to the rules uh, for the market processes, uh, they are quite different. We have, I come to this later, a standardization body, uh, the APEX group, and I have seen Bulgaria uh, is an observing member there, uh, where we have some standards, uh, how to run uh, the processes in a collaborative way and how to exchange the data. Um, but there are specifics in each country, so the uh, implementations uh, differ a little bit. You cannot directly copy it from one country to another. Uh, we have an approach now where we want to uh, copy uh, the rules from Norway to Ukraine, uh, but it also requires uh, lots of adoption. And the only countries that harmonized their rules uh, were the Nordics countries. We will also see a little bit more about this. And uh, there is also an impact from the winter package or now the, the clean energy package. Um, they wanted to standardize the market communication across Europe. Uh, there was a task force, but yeah, it, I will not say that, that they failed, uh, but um, the result is um, similar to uh, the APICS uh, group, uh, that there are common elements across Europe, uh, but uh, that, uh, that the implementation per country is uh, different uh, and the focus should uh, be on interoperability. Uh, and an important thing uh, was, uh, that uh, the price regulation for households uh, should uh, disappear uh, when uh, this regulatory package is implemented at national level. This will not happen immediately, but in the next few years. Yeah, good. This is a standard setup. It's the same in Bulgaria. Uh, uh, you have uh, the separation of the market roads uh, with distribution, retail and transmission. In Germany, we also have the meter operators and the meter data provider uh, beside uh, the wholesale markets uh, with uh, 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 and the balancing market uh, and uh, uh, generation. So, 
but what happens uh, when uh, there is a real uh, competitive market after a few years you will see completely independent retailers uh, yellow for example that's a uh, um, daughter company of enbw they serve now 1.5 million customers across germany and it's a pure retail cus uh, company they have only offices and and a very good uh, uh, procurement and, and trading company because uh, this is the uh, uh, key uh, success factor for an independent retailer. But you can also buy electricity at Aldi or Lidl and make a contract there. Uh, what we see, especially in, in Germany, but not only in Germany, uh, are energy cooperatives. So um, uh, public or uh, private organizations, uh, usually uh, in combination with a municipality uh, and private stakeholders, uh, that run together, for example, a wind park and share the the energy. Uh, something similar, uh, more on a on a, a pure commercial base, uh, uh, um, uh, providers of you know, we call it intelligent energy. Um, for example, Lichtblick. This is uh, also a pure retailer from the very beginning of the liberalisation, like yellow. Uh, but uh, what they offer today is uh, you can get from them photovoltaics, you can get from them storage, uh, and uh, they, uh, um, um, they uh, install and maintain this. But uh, you can also participate in their uh, community. They call it crowd electricity, uh, where uh, you share uh, uh, all this uh, together. And uh, um, so, for example, uh, when uh, your battery uh, is running uh, out of energy, uh, you get it from the community from somewhere in the crowd. So this is technically it's one balancing area. Uh, uh, and if there is uh, no uh, stored energy left, uh, only in that moment, a lead click is buying this from uh, from the spot market uh, uh, and, and there. Uh, success uh, and their knowledge is uh, to handle uh, this uh, crowd and also the connection to the energy market. Good. We we see solutions from the App Store like Google Solar. Uh, uh, we see different storage concepts, and I'm developing a proposal now uh, for a, a new innovation project uh, on virtual storage. Uh, so uh, you. Uh, use uh, fr from from the end users perspective uh, a kind of account uh, where your surplus energy goes or where you buy uh, energy uh, when it's cheap on the market by a service company and you use it uh, maybe in in winter uh, then uh, we see uh, tesla bmw mercedes for example uh, not only pro uh, um, providing charging stations, but also uh, batteries. And uh, we see new uh, IT service. Uh, so for example, ENBW uh, is providing uh, the meter to cash service in, you can buy uh, different uh, uh, levels uh, of service. So from uh, uh, just IT service uh, up to operational uh, service, installing the meters, doing the meter reading, uh, uh, and all uh, the related IT solutions. And they uh, sell uh, this service uh, uh, also outside the ENBW group. So they have big customers, uh, uh, third parties, um, that uh, decided, okay, it's cheaper to use uh, these highly standardized services from ENBW uh, than uh, to build these services themselves. And of course, uh, we also see the blockchain, especially in peer-to-peer -peer trading uh, uh, in the market. Uh, we also use this, uh, of example, in this future flow uh, projects to provide uh, flexibility uh, bits to activate them and then to, to build them. Yeah, so there are some prerequisites uh, for a competitive uh, and functioning retail market. So uh, we need uh, the full unbundling and the separation of retail and distribution, uh, the roles and responsibilities 
have to be clearly defined. So we have the harmonized role model, for example, from ENSO A. Uh, we need clear binding codes and degrees uh, for, for the business. So for example, for the grid access uh, or grid fees or how to do the balancing. And uh, the most important thing, uh, we need a very clear and detailed definition uh, of all the market processes. I show you the examples later uh, that are handled in a, a collab uh, uh, collaboratively across the industry between the different market participants uh, and all uh, the associated uh, communication. So the data formats, uh, the use cases, uh, and, and this has to be mandatory. And to implement this is not uh, a story of one year when I was at the ENBW and we started uh, with the first processes, uh, supplier switching and exchange of meter data. After one year, we thought, okay, now we are fine. Uh, it's implemented, uh, but uh, the next processes were ahead of us uh, and the next uh, uh, levels of regulation. And uh, it went on year over year. Uh, after three, four years, we thought it will never stop, and it didn't stop until today. What what you see here, for example, in this screen, these were the ongoing regulations uh, provided uh, by the regulator. Uh, so, for example, here, this was the new energy law, uh, GPKE, Geli, this was about supplying customers in electricity and gas. We did the big mistake uh, that we treated gas and electricity separately and afterwards we could merge all the documentation, all the rules, all the software systems uh, when we were working uh, on, on gas. There is, there is some difference, uh, uh, but not so much in the processes, um, a little bit in the data format and that's it. Then, Fritz, then, sorry for the interruption. Uh, we think uh, that we have to wrap up the uh, your presentation and okay. uh, the session. Uh, yeah. It's very very inf informational, uh, full of examples. Uh, but if if there is a way uh, in order to conclude your part yeah. and then move uh, to the closing one, uh, uh, just quickly uh, through the rest for uh, for the sorry, yeah. Uh, uh, and that's fine. And, and the key message is here, all the red bubbles you see, these were IT pro uh, huge IT projects, each bubble. So it's a very uh, long and uh, elaborative story. So there are lots of business processes that have to be automated from the change of supplier uh, to meet the data exchange, um, 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 uh, uh, technical uh, uh, data and so on. And they all need to be automated. Um, there is this EPIX organization uh, and Bulgaria is a member of that. And here is just a glance for further reading uh, how the Nordics countries harmonize their model. And when we come to the uh, way the data exchanged, uh, we see examples in a meshed way, like in Germany, uh, and a central hub in mixed forms. And But there is a clear direction to central data hubs and clearing houses. Here on this slide, uh, you uh, can read it later, uh, you will see all the countries that uh, have already implemented or are in implementation of central data hubs. Uh, and uh, here um, you uh, get an idea of the scope of these data hubs. So it's about metering point administration, and the business processes, uh, the energy data management, and on top, uh, the uh, uh, balancing processes, grid fee calculation, and what's completely new now to open this for third parties for energy services and flexibilities. Good. Here are some. Uh, this slide is uh, um, a workshop on its own. Uh, what you have to consider uh, when you build such a data hub and clearing house, and uh, very important, uh, you need somebody who maintains. Uh, all the processes, the documentation, the data formats, and in Germany, uh, we have ED at Energy. I'm still a member of uh, this organization, and I also found it, uh, helped to found this organization some, almost 20 years ago, uh, where you maintain 
all the codes, uh, uh, all uh, the message implementation guides, the use cases, and so on. Because without that, you will be lost. And okay, SAP has some tool uh, to do this. And the last two slides, uh, I put together some lessons learned uh, from uh, all the processes. So just to pick a few of them, uh, you need a collaboration among all the uh, participants. So retailers, independent retailers, distributors, regulator have to sit together uh, to define the framework uh, for uh, operating uh, the liberalized and competitive market. Uh, and data cleansing is very important. At, uh, for example, when we implemented the grid usage billing at EMBW, this was a nightmare. Uh, only uh, we had to implement this, I was working for the distributor, we had to implement this with each retail company, some 80 retail companies. It was a project on its own. Uh, per retail company and in average only 40 percentage of the data matched e each other and you can imagine what happens when you want to do an fully automated invoice verification uh, um, in total 3.5 million grid usage uh, invoices per month uh, uh, and when 60 percent fail we uh, we couldn't cope uh, to implement always new task forces to uh, uh, to fix this and had to find other ways. And um, yeah, the one important thing that could be uh, uh, very relevant for Bulgaria as well is the use of shared services. As I mentioned, these examples from uh, uh, ENBW uh, and uh, you need uh, this permanent working group or uh, maybe something associated to the regulator uh, to uh, maintain uh, the uh, the whole framework uh, uh, and the regulator makes it binding and every uh, company is uh, uh, following this and then you can achieve uh, um, a fully uh, automated uh, collaborative environment uh, to uh, handle uh, the competitive and liberalized market in the in the same way uh, and with the same uh, efficiency as you have uh, done it before when there were still uh, incumbent uh, energy companies and that's it thanks a lot many thanks fritz indeed uh, your presentation brought us to uh ages of development of uh, technologies, both utilities and uh, uh, IT-wise, let's put it uh, uh, th th that way. Uh, we don't have any questions in the chat. Uh, if, if there are uh, people from the audience who would like to uh, raise hand and ask their question, either in English or in Bulgarian, we can help with the translation. Uh, they can do it uh, right now. Uh, otherwise, the presentations will be available on our website uh, as a follow-up coverage of the uh, webinar, uh, as well as uh, we can provide contact information and your contacts to uh, people that are interested uh, to collaborate with you. And uh, my remark as a, by as a bystander uh, to your presentation, Fritz, probably the last couple of slides of yours were the most uh, comprehensive and complex ones. Uh, given the fact that there are real lessons learned uh, and to collaborate, to ask people to uh, collaborate and communicate uh, in, in a small team is uh, uncomparable to a huge uh, energy system, power utilities, the, uh, TSOs, uh, governments, etc. It's it's very complicated one, but uh, market liberalization is... Uh, the present for Western Europe and probably the future for Eastern, at least for Bulgaria. Once again, many thanks. Uh, I would like uh, to ask every one of you who have cameras to switch them on. We are at the end of the webinar, probably the very, very end of the webinar, and we have to have your smiley faces. And Rado, you, you can uh, close this webinar right now. Uh, Mikael, Fritz, uh, many thanks uh, for your excellent uh, and uh, thorough presentations. 
Uh, a huge uh, thank you to Biljana and Nadezhda for putting this together and to the whole SAP Bulgaria team and the agency. Uh, and once again, Rado, thank you very much for entrusting us uh, as a partner to deliver such a valuable content to our members and beyond. Uh, so, please, final remarks. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, on my behalf and behalf of Olivier, who uh, had to leave, I would like to thank you. Uh, we are here to deliver substantial value and innovation that matters for the people. And uh, I would kindly support uh, Danny here because the last slides were showing how this innovation and technology in reality. So we are talking uh, real projects, so we're talking reality. So uh, what, what you see in Bulgaria now will be completely different in the next five years. So be ready for the change. Trust Amcham, trust SAP, and uh, join the community. And use the Amcham newsletter channel on a weekly basis for updates coming from us. This is just the beginning. And thank you to Fritz and to Miguel for their presentations, actually. One, one short uh, comment from my side. So the, the second part of my uh, presentation, the liberalization, uh, this is usually a half a day workshop or even more. Uh, so, if there is an uh, interest, uh, I'm happy to support here. Even uh, if I go on early retirement in a few days, uh, I will still be available for this and I would be happy uh, to, to support uh, with all the hands on uh, experience in liberalized markets. Thank you very much, Fritz, and we wish you all of us happy retirement. <laughs> and stay Thank around. You. Yeah, don't be that quick. I would I would suggest uh, such valuable experts should uh, be around and be more involved. Uh, not transferring knowledge is is, is a key asset. Yeah. Okay, Thank you uh, Miguel, all the best to Barcelona. I mean to Espanol, the city first, and then the football club. Uh, once again, thank you and thank you, Fritz, uh, for for your presentations. Be in touch, stay around, and take care all. Thank Again. you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Oh, bye bye.